here's another classic game that we're going to take a look at. Uh, we're going to go over how to play it and why I like it and why I think it's already classic even though it's already five years old. Um, this is Isle of Sky by Alexander Pfister and Andreas Pelican, who did Broom Service together and then they did this game basically at the same time about five years ago in 2015. So um, the box will also look familiar because the artist who did this box did Oh My Goods and La Havre and Orleans and Grand Austria Hotel and all that. So it's fun um, if you like those kind of Mayfair lookout games that way. Um, but as far as the, the artwork and all that. But it's also fun because it's um, an early design where you're tiling a little bit more going on than Carcassonne. There's an auction mechanic. So let's take a look at it. We'll look at how to play, what's going on in the game, and then we'll come back at the end and talk about my final thoughts. Here's the setup for Isle of Sky. We have our game board in the middle of the table. We use the front side in a two to four player game. Um, and the backside in a five player game, it shows that in the bottom left corner, um, right there. So you shuffle the scoring tiles and you place a random scoring tile face up on each of the spaces marked A to D. We see that here, A, and then B, C, D, and you put the rest of the tiles back into the box. You don't need them for this. That is one of the things that I enjoy about this game is there's a lot of replayability in that you're going to score different ways at different times. Okay, the next thing is make sure that you have the round tracker down here at the bottom of the game board. That will just help you score throughout the game and keep track of where you're at. Also, you do have your individual uh, point tracker that will go around the game board. All right, each player is going to get a screen. Uh, they get a marker for discard. And I've already given every player your five income that's actually the first part of every turn but I went ahead and gave those coins to everybody um, because at the beginning everybody's gonna get the same amount of income anyways the reason you're gonna get the same amount of income is everybody gets the same starting tile this just happens to be the red players starting tile but on the front side you have your castle and you have the five income shown there by the coin symbol and you want to connect that to whiskey barrels which have an additional coin symbol but every round you're going to go through and score based on the banners that are out starting in round three there's also a catch-up mechanism and that for every player ahead of you during the income phase you're going to get an additional coin and then coins at the end are worth a victory point for every five that you have so it's important to be aware of all that Okay, let's go ahead and talk about how to score. So in the first round, you score A. Second round, you score B. Third round, A and C. And then B and D. And then uh, fifth round, A, D, and C. And finally, B, C, and D. The final thing you'll want to do is get your bag. Make sure you have all the tiles for play in it. Give it a good shake. And then you're all set. Since we're all ready to play the game, we already know that everybody has their income, which is actually the first phase of each round. Um, you take the bag, you get three tiles for the first player, and then you pass to the next player, they get three tiles, and then the next player, so forth. You're going to take those tiles, you're going to put them behind your screen, and select which one you want to keep, actually which two you want to keep, and which one you want to discard. Real quick, let's take a look at an income tile. Here's an income tile with a whiskey barrel on it. You want to make sure that when you get these, you're able to connect them by road to your castle so that you get that additional income throughout the game. That's an important part of keeping balance throughout the players. Okay, here's our largely useless first player token like in most games, but it has the same artwork. We'll put that down there. Um, so the first player is going to go ahead and stick their hand in the bag, draw out three tiles randomly, and then they're going to put those behind their screen and start thinking about how they want to assign uh, their money or their discard token to those. In this case, maybe they want this one with the two boats on it because it will connect and uh, they're going to use their discard token which has a little axe on it to pick one that doesn't have something that they think they might be able to use in the future. So the phases are income, draw tiles, and set prices, which we're doing right now, discard a tile, and then fourth, buy a tile. So as you assign your money to the other two tiles, 
people are going to have a chance to buy those tiles from you. At least you gain the income, and that's part of scoring later on. But right now, they're going to go ahead and assign two money to the middle one and one money to the outside one. They decided the middle one offered more for them. So when it gets to the buy a tile phase, uh, both of those tiles could ostensibly be bought from them. If somebody did, they would pay that money to the player who had hid those behind their screen. You don't have to buy a tile from another player, but if you um, retain those tiles and somebody doesn't buy them from you, you pay that money to the bank. So you're either going to get the benefit of the tile to your board, or you're going to get the benefit of the money from another player during the auction. Um, it is possible that you might not be able to build anything if you set your prices too low, so just keep that in mind as you're setting up your prices during this phase. So everybody's going to go around, take their turns, and then we're ready for the next phase, which is where we reveal and discard, and then we go into the buy phase. To reiterate, during the buy phase, you reveal what's behind here, you discard the one that has the discard uh, token associated with it, and then each player has a chance to buy one tile from another player, starting with the starting player. If those tiles aren't bought by another player, you pay the money back to the bank, and then you're allowed to build those onto your board. In this case, we're going to say that the player um, who is first has their two extra money from the start of the game. So here's those coins. They have their money and they're looking at what the other players have and they're looking at what they have they realize that they might get three income but those aren't terrible ones to build if they do have them so they're going to take their two money and they see that another player has um, put a cost of two on one of their tiles and we're going to pretend that it's this tile which has a final scoring number on it related to uh, boats um, so those scrolls uh, the scrolls allow us to do additional final scoring and we're looking at how to place the tile following the rules. In this case we're looking for a way to attach water to it and maybe we want to make our water bigger. Um, and every completed area it, that has a scroll in it is going to score double. So we want to look for a way to add water tiles and finish that one. We'll pretend that nobody wanted to buy these tiles from this first player. So they're not going to have additional income. In fact, they're going to run out of income because they're going to have to pay this to the bank. But we're going to do that so that we can add these tiles to what they currently have out on the board. So remember how I said we had to follow uh, placement restrictions. We're going to continue adding to this water. And we're going to put one here. And maybe we're going to want to get more water here, here, and here. Then we would be able to score that water area uh, double for our scroll. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the scoring tiles. Um, because we're going to be wanting to think about that as we place our tiles. So in this case we have one that says you get one VP for each sheep and each cattle that is orthogonally or diagonally adjacent to a farm in the clan territory. Also one victory point for each sheep and each cattle that is on a farm tile. This is actually a fairly easy one to score early on. You won't get tons of points but you'll get some points. So the farm is that little building there. You'd want to look for that. You'd want to look for the animals. The animals show up on the tiles. And let's say I were able to score some of that. Uh, and I'm the white player. I would get four points because of the animals that are out on my initial starting tile. So they're there, there. And there's my points. These symbols are fairly small, so be aware of that as you start to play the game. Each scoring tile is only used three times per game, so be aware of that as you're laying your tiles. But go ahead and build, and then score, and then you'll move up the round tracker, and you're ready for the next round. Again, you want to be aware of what's going on with the scoring tiles each round. Um, that as you move up, they're going to change. It's going to change what is scoring, and then also remember that starting in round three, there's that catch-up mechanism of whoever is in front of you you're going to get a coin for each person in front of you if you're in last place completely you're going to get additional coins and coins at the end of the game for every five r points so that is an important catch-up mechanism that is built into the game don't forget about it another important part of the game that you don't want to forget about is those scrolls that we mentioned earlier so let's take a look at one of those a little bit closer okay there we go on this one we have well let's turn it 
you get one point for every uh, two boats in a water area. So you would actually get two points for every two boats if you were to complete that water area like we talked about earlier. So it's important to remember that, uh, that those are also used for final scoring besides the scoring that's going on during the game. So don't ignore your scrolls. Final thoughts with Isle of Sky. This has ha been a staple in my collection since it first came out. I don't see myself ever getting rid of it unless there's something that really comes along that's better than it. I play it more often than Carcassonne because it has a little bit uh, more going on with it. I think that it um, just has a nice appeal to it in terms of what's going on with the tiles and what you get to do with them. I think that, um, you know, if anything, I wish that those little uh, screens for each player were maybe slightly bigger and that they were slightly thicker. They're, they're a little bit cheap feeling. Um, but other than that, the components are fine. It's a fun game. There's expansions if you want it. I don't think it needs it. But if you're really into this game and you want some more of that, it will give you that. It's a nice filler. Um, I don't I don't see it, unless you're playing with a full player account, I don't see it actually taking the full 60 minutes that the box says. Uh, it's more like a 45-minute game, 50-minute game. Uh, you keep those auctions moving along. Uh, I like that there's some give and take with those, that you're always going to be getting something that you can use and that's useful for your points. I like that there are different ways of scoring and that those will change each time you play. So there's a lot of replayability here. I think that's why this game has um, some stability in my collection and as far as being on the, the shelf um, for people to pick up for a long time. So Isle of Sky, great game, easy to learn. Um, it's, it's not a difficult game. Um, check it out if you like that tile planning and you want something with a unique auction mechanic that's not going to leave you out in the cold. So, yep, thanks. Subscribe if you're looking for more videos or just check out another video over here and we'll talk to you later.